Unable to make ends meet and distraught over harassment by their police, Mohamed Bouazizi, a Tunisian street vendor, set himself on fire on December 17, 2010. His death a few days later sparked mass protests across the country and led to the ousting of President Zine El Abedin Ben Ali. Similar movements arose across the region, toppling governments from Libya to Syria. On the 10th anniversary of Bouazizi's death, we look at the economic impact of the Arab Spring uprisings. Moby Nasser reports. Thousands of Tunisians took to the streets last month demanding better work conditions. Their slogans are reminiscent of those raised in 2010. Back then, the demonstrations led to the ouster of longtime President Zain al Abidin Ben Ali. Unlike that regime, the current government says it's cognizant of the people's problems and is working to resolve them. We are aware of the situation of civil servants. We have affirmed that we will activate our agreement over minimum wage across all sectors. But economic conditions have not improved over the past decade. Government debt has doubled to almost 88% of GDP since 2010. At 18%, the unemployment rate is just as high as it was before Ben Ali's ouster. And Tunisia is among the world's worst COVID-hit countries, with more than 18,000 deaths. In July, President Kais Saeed suspended the parliament and sacked the prime minister. He said he did it to rescue the economy. I have taken responsibility. I am taking a historic responsibility. Those who claim this matter is related to a coup need to revise their lessons in the constitution. But Tunisia is the only country where the Arab Spring led to a democratic transition, while Egypt, Libya, Syria and others descended into conflict and authoritarianism. And Tunisians are worried that their hard-fought freedoms are under threat once again. We are a bit scared of what may happen on the return of the Bin Ali era. Now there's only one power. It is the president who holds the executive and judicial powers. Some analysts say with his enhanced powers, the president may be better able to negotiate with the IMF and other lenders for funds that are badly needed to keep the economy afloat. Millions of Tunisians are hoping this support doesn't come at the cost of their country's nascent democracy. Mubi Nasser, TRT World. Let's get more on this now with Luciano Zakara in Doha. He's an assistant professor at Gulf Politics at the Qatar University. He's also director of the Observatory on Politics and Elections in the Arab and Muslim World. Many thanks for being with us today, Luciano. We have seen earlier this year Tunisian President Syed he partly suspended parliament in July. He sacked the country's prime minister, something that looks hardly democratic, although, I mean, he has pledged to be working towards a more democratic and inclusive uh, system. Ten years after the, the beginning of the Arab Spring in Tunisia, where do we stand? What's the situation there? Well, I mean, not only in Tunisia, but in the whole Arab world that's passed through this wave of uh, Arab revolts. Uh, it's possible to say that the whole region uh, remains more or less in the same situation than 10 years ago. If, you, if we analyze all the indicators that we are dealing with, uh, political participation, political reform, um, I mean, having a democratic uh, electoral system and uh, participation of citizens in the policy making process. Uh, the only exception was uh, uh, Tunisia considered the only one experiment that they came from an uh, authoritarian environment and it finished in uh, more or less uh, successful democratic experiment. But lately, uh, we can see that there is a democratic regression mm. uh, in, in this country. The, 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 other, the other countries of the region, they are, uh, that they were not affected by the, by the, by the Arab Spring or that they were affected uh, in a limited way by the Arab Spring, they became much more resilient. The political regimes became much more resilient. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't see an, an evolution of the democratic uh, uh, situation of most of these countries, let alone countries that they are still under uh, civil war uh, condition. Um, this is more or less the, the general picture that we can, uh, right. we can campaign after the 10 years. I will talk about the other countries in a moment. But first, one question uh, on finance. Tunisia is going to be starting negotiations with the IMF soon uh, to um, get financial assistance. Do you think the, the country is well placed? It's in a good position to actually start these negotiations? Well, it depends on how the international community is uh, assessing the, the, um, the, the moves that they are made by, by the current president. 
I mean, there is some hesitation in condemning uh, the, 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 the cancellation of the, the, the parliament or the, the sacking of the, the prime minister, because the main priority seems to be uh, stability, it seems to be stability to be able to uh, implement uh, economic uh, measures that they are trying to improve the situation of, of, of the country. So if uh, the economic measures that they will implement will be more uh, adjustment to, to, to public expenditures, of course, uh, you cannot do that if you have an open system with capacity of people to express their, their concerns. So it, it all depends how the international community will, will react to that. It seems, uh, as, uh, as I said, uh, that the international community is hesitant in having a common position towards the support of uh, uh, democratic principles in the country, and they are more interested in preserving a, a stability. Mm -hmm. Moreover, having in mind that the the the, the, the spark of the Arab Spring uh, was in Tunisia, nobody it seems to be interested in having another wave of revolts in the whole Arab world. Right, and you've, you've spoken about uh, the other countries that uh, saw an Arab Spring, uh, the likes of Egypt, uh, Libya, Syria. What happened uh, to, to these economies over the past 10 years? It's difficult to claim that, they, that, that there were improvement in the economic situation of the population. Actually, in the countries that they were suffering, uh, mainly uh, Syria, Yemen, um, uh, Libya, uh, it's hardly difficult to, to say, to claim that the, the, the impact of the Arab Spring was a positive one. Actually, uh, these countries uh, collapsed and their economies uh, collapsed. And, and the other countries that they, they, they faced uh, uh, Arab uh, Spring and they managed to, to, to survive, like Algeria, uh, Morocco, Egypt, etc., uh, mm, as I said before, they became much more resilient without any economic improvement mm. uh, granted to, to their own people. So if the if the economic concern, the economic grievances were the root of the, um, of the Arab Spring or the protest that they spread all over uh, North of Africa, uh, the, the, um, the conditions are still there, uh, nothing changed. Uh, only, the only except, exception is the, the, the GCC states that they managed to, to survive because they are, of course, in a much better uh, situation because of the oil wealth. Uh, so they were able to tackle the effect of the Arab right. Spring using right. different mechanisms. Luciano, after the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan earlier this year, we've seen some serious geopolitical shift going on in the region. I mean, can you tell us exactly what's happening now in the region? And also, is this only driven uh, by the U.S. with essentially withdrawing from the region, or are there other forces at play here? No, it's impossible to claim that all is fault of uh, the United States. The United States is one of the external factors affecting the the, the region, but there are many international actors that intervene or interfere in the fate of the, the Arabs, uh, Arab states. Uh, United States have been criticized for uh, very hard intervention in most of the cases, and it's also criticized for not intervening in some cases when the things are uh, required uh, or the, the situation requires U.S. intervention. So the, 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 the approach that Obama, Trump, and Biden uh, were taking is a little bit different on which way the United States would intervene to avoid further uh, in engagement or involvement in internal uh, affairs uh, of Arab, Arab states. Uh, the problem is that um, it's easy to claim that the United States is to blame to, uh, for everything uh, when nobody wants to assume that the political elites have been responsible for many of the wrongdoings in all these uh, years. Uh, in, in most of the Arab, uh, in most of the Arab countries, so uh, it's easy to to, to put the to, to, to blame external mm -hmm. actors, but it's not the, the it's not the only actor that uh, has intervened in the region. Luciano Zaccarano, many thanks for this analysis.